Welcome to Disaffected from dystopian Burlington, Vermont. I'm Joshua Slocum, and this is the show where we talk about politics, culture, and relationships through a psychological lens. What you're going to see tonight is a failed state writ small. You're also going to see the entire thesis of Disaffected displayed at a Burlington City Council meeting from August 14th of this year. That thesis is this. What we think of as domestic abuse or child abuse has gone public and feral. The state of mind that creates domestic abuse, narcissistic and unstable personality disorders. This has taken over public discourse in the West. This is gonna be a difficult episode. In my 49 years, I have never seen a public meeting like this. Watching it the first time was difficult for me. It took me back to a childhood home under the rule of an insane woman, a woman with borderline and narcissistic personality disorders who called herself a mother, but who was in reality an abusive prison warden. Tonight, you will see largely black activists and their white allies screaming, cursing, lying, and threatening the city council, the mayor, and the chief of police. You will see an activist put hands on a white man who had had enough and wanted to speak his mind. You will hear that white man silenced by screaming black activists and white allies who rip his microphone out of his hand. You will hear the white president of the city council telling him to stop speaking, and you will hear her allow him to be shut down and run out of the auditorium. The byword to keep in mind tonight is communal narcissism and victim narcissism. This is when extreme narcissism, to the point of sociopathy, overtakes a political group and is allowed to burn out of control. Here are the players that you will see the most of tonight. Burlington City Council President Karen Paul, Burlington Mayor Moreau Weinberger. Now, Kevin and I here at Disaffected have no love for President Paul or Mayor Weinberger. These are the officials who presided over a resolution earlier this year that, while it did not specifically name us, targeted our friends and targeted us. It said that our objections to the mutilation of children under the banner of gender affirming care was an act of violence. Our objections were acts of violence. The resolution implied that our words led to the murder of a man who called himself a woman, a man who picked up a psychopath who had just been sprung from a psychiatric hospital, put him into his car, went alone with him down a country road, and got murdered for his trouble. That was our fault, you see. But you'll see tonight that the crowd abused and threatened City Council President Karen Paul and Burlington Mayor Moreau Weinberger. It's hard to watch. No one, even our opponents, even our enemies should be abused this way. And you will see how these officials brought this on themselves. This monster is something they actively created. They gestated, carried, and birthed the sociopathic terrorists that you will see this evening. They asked for this. They cooperated with it. They allowed these terrorists to abuse other people with the city's approval. And now they're at the business end of these people's guns. They painted themselves into a corner because the only reason they're in power is because they're duplicitous, amoral, white politicos who are only in office because they knelt and kissed the ring of these psychotic activists. And now they have nowhere to go. Here are the issues. In early 2020, Burlington created the Racial Equity, Inclusion, and Belonging Department, R-E-I-B. That department then hired black activist Taisha Green as its director. Ms. Green organized and mounted a Juneteenth celebration in 2021 and started plans for the next one in 2022. Then in July of 2020, Mayor Moreau Weinberger declared racism to be a quote, public health emergency in Burlington. He did this at the height of the COVID hysteria to shore up his future voters from among the unstable malcontents that make up the loudest portion 
of the Burlington electorate. In February of 2022, so that is last year, REIB director Taisha Green quit her job in Burlington and went to Minneapolis where she was hired for a similar role. Minneapolis city councilors noticed accounting discrepancies in her department. A Minneapolis financial investigation of Ms. Green's department found overspending, bloat, and subpar accounting and vendor procurement practices. So then, the Burlington, Vermont City Council felt pushed to do its own investigation of Ms. Green's tenure at the REIB department. It is Burlington's financial review of the Juneteenth celebration under the Department of Racial Equity, Inclusion, and Belonging. It is this financial review that the activist abusers you will see in here tonight are taking issue with. The review did not find that Ms. Green broke any laws or city rules. It did, not, it did find, however, that accounting practices were opaque, that professionalism was lax to non-existent, and that the Juneteenth event in Burlington went over budget. Local taxpayers had to make up the difference of more than $100,000. The total expenditure between taxpayers and private donors was over $400,000. The activists call this financial review, this act of asking questions, they call it defamation of Ms. Green's character. They scream in insane anger at the city council for even asking a question. They demand that the city apologize in writing to Ms. Green for asking questions about her practices, and they try to maneuver the city council into admitting guilt for her actions in writing in what appears to be a setup that will allow Ms. Green to sue the city in civil court for a large payout. Watch for the following tonight. Number one, they all speak from a prepared script. You will hear the same exact phrases repeatedly. You'll hear black femmes, non-binaries, and trans women experiencing terrorism over and over again. Number two, like victim narcissists always do, they claim to be victims while they blatantly abuse other people right in front of cameras and in front of the whole world. They are in fact terrorists. They are terrorists, as you will see. Yet they call the officials they're abusing terrorists who are endangering their lives. Number three, they are naked racists and black supremacists. You will hear them say things to and about white people that would get a white person killed on the streets and probably acquitted in America today if he dared to utter it about a black person. Number four, you will hear them call the city and its staff motherfuckers, racist white men, and abusers. You will hear them talking about pussy. You will see them twerking for the cameras, and you will see the officials sit there in bland robotic silence and simply take it. The Maoist revolution is here in Burlington. It's not coming, it's here. And it is likely going to get somebody killed for real. This is what is coming to your town and to your state and to our entire country if we don't stop it. So let's go. Good evening. Before I start, I just wanna make sure I understand the rules. I'm supposed to focus on you, Karen, and speak this narrative to you. I yes. just, I just want to. Yes. Sure. Okay. That would be that would that would be great. Okay. Green. And just make sure that you're close enough to the microphone so we can hear you. Okay. Thank Hello. you. Hello. My name is Farine Paris Meyer. I am black. I am a woman. I am an educator. I am queer. I am an activist. I'm a Burlington resident. I'm a first generation student. I'm living with anxiety. I'm financially struggling. And I find myself questioning life. As someone who is a black woman, who has to move through this community with such a mask sometimes, we're expected to hide our pain, hide that we are not doing well, hide 
all these different parts that unfortunately allows white people in white supremacy culture to think I am a robot, to think as if I'm not human, to think that I can keep going no matter how hard you kick my black behind area down. And I, Karen, am asking you to let me know what you will do as council president this evening to ensure that we are not aligning this agenda to support a mayor of our city that has lasted a witch hunt on former director Taisha Green since he was made seen for his mishandling of the CNA report of 2021. There's a reason why three years later, we are bringing up finances, we are bringing up things that have been allocated and closed down. This is a witch hunt on former director Taisha Green because Miro has done his time here and anybody who spends this level of energy and ego and pride and pettiness and surround yourself with yes people to take a black woman out means that you are in for something for yourself following your time as mayor and you take out your threat and i'm going to put that out there because while we not check our facts while we not do our due diligence to ensure that we're hiring actual auditors and not lawyers to put Taisha Green's life on the line. There is no responsibility while y'all get to go home and put your head down at night while we sit and die over and over in our bodies. So I will step away. Our community will come forward. But Miro, your witch hunt Thank on this queen ends today. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I want you to remember this woman. Remember her timid affect. Make a note in your mind right now. Remember her breathy, timid, hitching voice because she was living with anxiety and scared. Remember that. You're going to see something different from her later. This is the public comment period of the Burlington City Council meeting. And the time limit is two minutes. As it's a government meeting, First Amendment rules applied. Notice that Farine was able to take over three minutes and 20 seconds. Notice how she began by saying that she wants to understand the rules. Well, we will soon see how much she cares about those rules. She says, I am black, I am a woman, I am an educator, I am queer, I am an activist, I am living with anxiety. She says that a black woman has to move through the community with such a mask sometimes. She's right, but it's a different kind of mask than what she's talking about. And she says, I, Karen, I, Karen, I'm asking you to let me, to, to let me know what you will do as council president about Big, bad, racist, Moreau Weinberger. Hmm. These people think slam poetry cadence makes them sound smart and formidable. They're not bright and they're not educated. They're simply narcissists. Let's go to the next one, please, Kevin. Um, I've been a member of this community for quite a while, living here in Vermont for 14 years. I am a, a member of the Mohawk tribe also Wyandotte, and I am, um, I just stand with solidarity with my brethren here, and I am let down time and time again by the atrocities I see around the city, around the state, and I can't stand by it very much longer. I just want to send my love and pour my heart out to these folks. You all belong to be here with me. I love you all and I'll stand by your side. Thank you. 
I stand with solidarity with my brethren. I am let down time and time again by the atrocities I see around the city. What atrocities? What are they? I love you all and I stand by your side. You're going to notice that this is a pattern tonight. You're going to see a lot of people de claiming, declaring their love, the generosity and bigness of their hearts. As you listen to their words, contemplate whether they seem authentic, whether they seem to match up with their behavior. Next one, please, Kevin. Is it on? It is okay. on. This is scary as a white masculine presenting person. So, um, thank you. Uh, good evening. My name is Liam Malone. I was born in Southern Vermont and I grew up between Bennington County and Burlington, Vermont. Um, I am here in solidarity with Taisha Green, Casey Ellerby, and Black Femmes, non-binary, and women throughout Vermont who are currently experiencing racial and gender-based discrimination, harassment, displacement, and terrorism. I yield the rest of my time. Masculine presenting. That's rich. For those of you who are listening, this is a very large white man who looks, who's giving off every possible signal of an effeminate homosexual in his style, his manner, his hair, his glasses. And what he did right there is part of the pattern I was telling you about. You're going to see a lot of people, particularly white people, simply, they just want to be seen to care. So they yield their time because they believe that they're storing up treasure in city council heaven and that every minute that they yield means that a poor starving black woman who's never had enough time in her life will be able to speak longer. Hmm. You know, this show, this episode tonight was not the show that we were putting together most of this week. We wiped the entire rundown for this. We are going to show you quite a bit of what happened, but it's not even half of the hours and hours that took place at this city council meeting. The, the preparation for this was difficult. I've never seen anything like this, but we want you to see it. I want you to see it and hear it, and I'm asking you in the audience to please share this. Post this video, send it to your friends, put it on Facebook, put it on Instagram. This is a warning for people who don't believe that the Maoist revolution is here, or they think that it's just a few kooks in just a few lefty left coast cities. It's not. And it's worse than people think. Let's go to the next clip, please, Kevin. Hello, can folks hear me? Yes. Uh, okay. Well, I'll try to use the mic and I'll speak loudly. Thank you. <laughs> All right. I think the mic is cranked. I'm going to speak loudly. Good evening. My name is Katerina Campbell from Burlington. I'm here speaking on behalf of myself. I am here in solidarity with Taisha Green, Casey Ellerby, Black Femmes, non-binary and trans folks, and women throughout Vermont who have or are currently experiencing racial and gender-based discrimination, harassment, displacement, and terrorism. I have lived in Vermont since 2007, Burlington since 2011, and when I think of civil service and public service, no one embodies that more than Taisha Green, Fareen Paris Meyer, Kaya Morris, the list goes on, Zariah Hightower. We demand an end to the practices and abuse that former director Green, Casey Ellerby, and others have experienced. 
We demand a full public articulation of harm from Mayor Mira Weinberger and the city of Burlington to Taisha Green, Casey Ellerby and their families for the continued defamation of character and unwarranted actions taken throughout city processes like the audit itself. We demand ongoing independent evaluation and oversight of the hiring and retention policies and solutions employed by the city of Burlington to combat anti-BIPOC and gender-based discriminatory practices. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you very much, Katerina. For those of you listening, uh, she looks like what you expect she would look like. She might be 22 years old, small, little, white, whitish woman, buzz cut, naturally, deliberate uglification. I'm here speaking on behalf of myself. Thank you, Katerina. Thank you. But she's also speaking for women and queers and trans folks and femmes and non-binaries who are experiencing displacement and terrorism. And th there it was. We demand an end to the practices and abuse. We demand a full public articulation of harm from Mayor Murrow Weinberger against Taisha Green. This is what I was telling you about in the introduction. They think they are going to maneuver the city council into admitting guilt in writing so that Miss Green gets a big fat payday in civil court. <laughs> Here, here's, here's the full quote. We demand a full par uh, public articulation of harm from Mayor Marone Weinberger and the city of Burlington Ty to Taisha Green, Casey Ellerby, and their families for the continued defamation of character and unwarranted actions taken throughout city processes like the audit itself. So you see, just as objecting to the surgical and chemical sterilization and mutilation of children is itself an act of abuse. The city asking questions and doing a financial review of taxpayer dollars is itself an act of abuse and defamation. Now, we first, we showed you a few minutes ago the video of, remember, she's very soft-spoken. She wanted to make sure that she addressed the narrative directly to Karen. We showed you Fareen Paris Meyer, the black activist who began by pretending to care about the rules of decorum. It's worth keeping that in mind as we watch Fareen's behavior throughout the meeting this evening. Um, behavior that she displayed with her husband and her children in attendance. Let's take a look at what her husband had to say with his child in tow at the speaker's table. My name is Josh Meyer of Burlington. I am here in solidarity with Taisha Green, Casey Ellerby, and black femmes, non-binary, and women throughout Vermont who have, are, who have or are currently experiencing racial and gender-based discrimination, harassment, displacement, and terrorism. I am in a multiracial family and we have been living in this city for over 10 years. We've experienced the impacts. <sighs> Why don't we, um, Josh, we'll hold, the, we'll hold the clock for a minute. We just start again in 10 minutes, thank you. For those of you listening, his wife just came up and now she's rubbing his back at the speaker's table. We have experienced the impacts of systemic and blatant racism which have taken an immeasurable, immeasurable toll on our family. We have found racial slurs written on our family car and have left our jobs due to experiences with racism at the institutions we served. While whiteness has provided me with shelter, as black women, Farine and the girls remain under constant attack. We continue to lose magical black and brown individuals in this community, like Taisha. Whether they are new to Burlington or have grown up in this area, hope for change is replaced by heartache when there is a realization that this community does not truly see and embrace them fully. Burlington folk are highly skilled at promoting diversity and talking about equity, but what are we actually doing to make people of color feel at home with opportunities in an environment that make talented people want to stay in this city? 
A highly deceptive brand of racism is ubiquitous, permeating city offices, local businesses, and schools. Each time a BIPOC community member leaves, it takes a toll on people of color in this community. Our family questions whether this place will love us back. Thank you. Thank Pathetic, and he's lying. I don't believe a word he says. I don't believe that they've had racist things sprayed on their house. He's lying. I can't prove that, but I don't believe it. And I believe he's also lying about seeing acts of racism and terrorism all over Burlington. The only, I see a lot of graffiti, and I do see some racist uh, messages and some threatening messages, only against white people, only against heterosexual people, only against conservatives. Never, never will you ever see anti-black racism. Oh, I'm not saying I want to see anti-black racism, but you won't see it at all ever here. He is lying. So I want to tell you what else I see in that performance there. Because my guess is that his crying is 50-50, um, comes on cue naturally to him, and 50% affected and performative. So his wife, Farine, the scared, scared woman, came up and rubbed his back, rubbed his back, calmed him down, soothed him while he was crying so he could keep speaking. His child, by the way, is up there. His child is sitting there at the speaker's table with his head down in his arms. Can you imagine how this feels? This is what I see. I wonder if he married Farine because she reminds him of his mother. Because no man, no normal man from a normal household marries a woman like that unless he has issues with his mother. And what I believe that I'm seeing here is the classic dyad that you see in the psychological literature. The married couple, the narcissist and the borderline, narcissistic personality disorder and borderline personality disorder or something similar. They complement each other. Usually we see it discussed in terms of the husband with narcissistic personality disorder and the wife with the emotionally unstable borderline personality disorder. But I think it's reversed here. It looks very familiar to me. And I want you to notice um, something else about the camera angles that you're seeing in this coverage tonight. TV coverage of city council meetings here in Burlington is provided by uh, a public entity called CCTV. Um, typically, camera angles in these meetings will switch back and forth between the public speaker and the city council president. But it seems to be working differently this evening um, because you will notice that when Mayor Moreau Weinberger comes under attack or, or faces accusations, the camera frequently switches to him and starts to zoom in to capture his reaction. Uh, I know this might seem small, um, but it's noticeable because it's out of character. It's out of the normal uh, set of steps that they take. And, it, and it's left Kevin and me wondering if community television here has itself become weaponized as a propaganda arm of the leftist agenda. I, I feel ridiculous. I feel ridiculous saying I wonder. I don't wonder. I, it has been. All right, let's listen to, um, let's listen to the next cut, please. Um, I'm here today in solidarity with Taisha and with Farreen and with all of the black women and non-binary folks and femmes. In She's wearing a mask. Who are repeatedly facing terrorism and racism every single day. And if you think that for some reason, because you have this position of power, because you're a good white person, you put one of those signs outside of your house, that you're somehow exempt from racism and white supremacy, you're wrong. And the fact that you're not doing everything that you can in your power to center the safety and the joy and the sense of belonging of black folks and brown folks in our community is a huge disservice and shows that you're not qualified to run our city. There is a world in which people of color can feel like they belong here and can feel safe. And that's a world that a lot of us are fighting for and advocating for. That can happen if we all work together 
to end white supremacy, the white supremacy that lives in ourselves and in our family members and in our community. And because you are not doing that, members of this council, some of you, that shows that you're not qualified to represent us. If you're not committed to the safety and well-being and belonging of everyone in our community, you're not qualified to be here. <laughs> As you look at this beautiful banner, is she pretending here, to cry? Gets a chance to look at it. It's really lovely. This quilt that says Juneteenth 2021 on it. I hope you think about how this all could have gone differently how black and brown folks who work in our city government, who work with you all, could feel supported and taken care of, and how this beautiful, wonderful event could have been celebrated and lauded and could have set the tone for the rest of this existence as a city. We could continue to have these beautiful celebrations, but because of what you have done unnecessarily, it's wrong, it's ridiculous, and you should resign. Lady Madonna, alone of her sex and her unbounded virtue. Thank you. Now let's listen to former city council member Max Tracy get emotional and address the mayor directly. Um, no one's been saying or recognizing Taisha and it really is deeply, deeply wrong. I think the other thing I wanna say is also that as my uh, co former colleagues on the council just pointed out, this behavior is different, or this, the treatment that Taisha is experiencing is entirely different than other white department heads have faced, and that is racism. That is racist, plain and simple. That is racist, and it needs to be called out as such. Max. And finally, the last thing I wanna say is you need to think through the implications of when you do something like this. Because when you, when you write a report like this, when you put a report out there, you open the door for racists to walk through and to threaten and to harm black people in our community. That is what you've done. You have caused harm to black people in our community and that harm is only just beginning. Yeah, yeah um, former city council member, Max Tracy, you've caused harm. You are a racist. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Max. And now harm is just beginning, he says. And then this happened. America, I can't even stand it. There's hypocrisy every which way we look. I see so much selective outrage every which way from people like you and people like you. I see people being hypocrites. How many times have you called somebody an anti-Semite because they called you out for being corrupt? Now you're experiencing something similar. Black people and everybody in America do the same thing. They do. I'm married to a black woman, and my divorce was a nightmare in this America because I had to deal with black supremacy and white supremacy. You see how vehement it gets when you even want to talk about the problems, right? And ah, ah, but nobody wants to call out the facts that all of the people almost in the last few years Stop. that have threatened me were like, yeah. They're grabbing it. Somebody from the audience is grabbing, physically I grab the microphone away. I can't for calling you. people out for the same hypocrisies. President Paul, can I call this a recess? This is a violation. Yes. Yeah. I don't see the police officers stopping her from assaulting me because the police are also assaulting me. And I don't see any black people caring about my assaults. Right. I've been told that for years. I started Occupy Wall Street. We're and take, I got we're assaulted take a during minute recess. Black Lives we're Matter in the last five few years. Recess. I got treated like shit. I married a black woman, and my children are half black. And this is a disgrace what we've become in this country. The division, 
the hypocrisy. I have a couple of things to say about this, and then I'm going to take you back and we're going to revisit it a little bit. This is the most chilling example of black racist supremacy and power I've ever seen in my goddamn life. And all these white people, especially those union members in red shirts, coming over to back up these black narcissists, to shut him up, to shut Todd LaCroix up to take his constitutional right to speak away from him. Yes, the First Amendment is in fact legally operative in this context. This is a government meeting. Yes, this is a First Amendment violation. Never tell me again that I'm out of line to call these black people disgusting, amoral racists. And if you have an aversion to hearing black people described this way, if you have an aversion to seeing and conceiving of black people as capable of having full humanity, including the capacity for evil, it is you, not me, who is racist. No one even had a second thought about depriving this white man of his right to speak in a public forum. The constitutional right he enjoys. This is a government forum. Look how natural it was for them to shut him down and threaten him. Look how the government immediately supported this without prompting. Did you notice that city, uh, you, you may not notice this, we're going to go back and we're going to listen to it. I want you to listen for city council president Karen Paul telling Todd LaCroix, that is his name, to stop right in the middle of it. Unprompted. She did that of her own accord. This was natural to her. Kevin, let's, let's play that, please. For almost in the last few years stop. that have threatened me. Stop. Yeah. For almost in the last few years stop. that have threatened me, we're playing yeah. Them? For almost in the last few years stop. that have threatened me, we're playing yeah. That's Karen Paul. She says stop, and then when she sees a woman grab the microphone away, she says yeah, stop, yeah, yeah. Karen, Todd needs to stop. Why? Why? What is it about Todd? That means that he specifically, Karen, has to stop. What is it about him? Why did you say, yeah? You watching, Karen? Look at me. You know, as I'm talking to you, that you shut him down because he's white. You're a racist, Karen. You're a fraud and you're a racist. And you betray your own for political reasons. You deserve everything you get in this meeting. All right, we here at Disaffected, we're gonna take a break here. Uh, but we're gonna leave you with an extended clip during the break to watch as President Karen Paul tries to call the meeting back to order and is not allowed to do so. We're going to we're going to we're going to continue we're going to continue with the meeting. We're going to continue with the meeting. We're going to continue we're going to continue with the meeting. The next person who is speaking is Brian Sheena. Thank you. 
is the smile going across the way. Okay. From the police person to the two people in the back. Do you know what that feels like? people to know that he's gone he's a couple blocks away just yeah Okay. That's why. That's why. And I'm sitting here because at the end of the day, you all will go home. But yet, we, this, we don't get to check out of these feelings when we leave this room. As black people, as BIPOC people, whatever it may be, you get to go home. Yes, this might affect where you might move career-wise. Or this might affect Farine. you might want people to have on your ticket. And I'm not Farine. going to stop, Karen, because I need to be part because you silence us all the time, and it's not fair, and the media writes for you, and you release reports before even giving it to the people you're empathy. Farine. You're doing that on purpose. You're doing that on purpose, Nero. Farine. And I just saw that you're raising brown and black children that look like me. Farine. Farine. Side, looking at white supremacy leadership being why does it nobody care about me? If Farine. it's not for me, if it's not for Chapman, if it's not for the wrong that you talk, do it for your kids, do it like where is your All right. mom? I think we just have to call a recess mom. until people calm down. I do something I'm fascinated. I don't give a chunk of sand by asking this jail. For what? Because I'm raising that you are selfish in your mail. All right. We're gonna we're but our next. Our next, do people have any idea how terrifying that is for a child? Her children were in the room for that performance. This is my mother. This is what home life was like for me when I was a little boy. You know, Kevin suggested that I toss out a question, a rhetorical question, asking, I wonder what those children's home life is like. Well, I, it's not a rhetorical question. I know what it's like. You know what it's like. You're seeing it. That's his home life. It's a terrible price for a child to pay. I'm 49 years old and I'm still paying for it. Let's move to former state lawmaker. So she was in the Vermont legislature. Kaya Morrison. She was in the state legislature and then she quit, she says, because of the overwhelming racism in the state house in picturesque little Montpelier, a town of 8,000 people. Go ahead, Kevin. I appreciate one more moment as some folks did yield their time. 
I just want to make sure that the final demand that was the most important is that we want a full public articulation of harm from Mayor Mira Weinberger and the city of Burlington to Taisha Green, to Casey Ellerby, to their families for the continued defamation of character and unwarranted actions taken through the city processes like this audit. Not an apology, a reckoning and accounting for the multiple forms of harm enacted by the city on behalf of the residents. Yes, each and every one of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, well. <sighs> May as well go right into the next one. All right, uh, before I begin, uh, Karen, congrats on the president, and, you know. Uh, but if you interrupt me tonight or any other black person, you are anti-black. So, but if you still decide to interrupt me, just address my parade, not me. Thank you. Okay, uh, first up, hi, Miami, watching at home. Love you. Um, and for the first 15 seconds, I just want to say, uh, you got the right day, but the wrong nigga. Um, in 1915, during the Reconstruction era, there was a film called Birth of a Nation. And the plot just, I'll just summarize it. It includes a white knight on a horse, Miro, um, saving the white woman in distress, Burlington. And it frames black people, specifically black masculine people, Taisha, as either incompetent, a super predator, or a monster. So with this auditing, you tried, you, Miro, you tried to use the stalish trope, one of the stalish trope, I'm bored actually, to call a brilliant, beautiful, talented, gifted, black queen incompetent. Fuck off. All right. And Champlain College, when I was 19 years old, during my second year at Champlain College, I was involved in a Title IX investigation. That resulted from two kisses on the cheek. I didn't get no pussy, but I got called a rapist. So that is one of the tropes, right? I am a super predator. And now in 2023, it has resurfaced, right? So I was the victim of institutional racism. So my heart goes out to not only Taisha, but the countless black films, black people, black masculine bodied people who are continuously targeted by Mira Weinberger and countless other white supremacist motherfuckers. So, Miro, white knight, Yoo get off your horse. Do not think that for a second that you will continue your reign of bullshit whiteness. Get off your horse. Um, and I got one more thing. And uh, revolution is not a one-time event. So black people always got black people's back. I'm not really talking to black people right now, but for you white abolitionists, accomplices, and co-conspirators, I'm not talking to allies, I'm talking to those people, show up again. Revolution is not a one-time event. Word to Audre Lorde. Shit, maybe show up tomorrow. And in conclusion, Miro, you about to lose your job. You about to lose your job. Get this She's starting to twerk. You about to lose your... I'm sorry, I got to wrap that up. I got to... Okay, bye. If you interrupt me tonight or any other black person, you are anti-black. You know what? I, I have nothing. That, that, that behavior speaks for itself. Are you listening? Are you paying attention? This is not... This is not going to go on forever in a stable state. People will reach a point past which they are no longer willing to be pushed, and they will push back. That's human nature. Some of them are going to push back violently. Some of that violence may end up being justified. This is what these people want. This is the Maoist revolution. She's talking about the Maoist revolution. Are you ready? She is. Next one, please, Kevin. Our next speaker is Lydia Diamond. 
To be followed by Leah Briggs. Yes, I did. Watch, watch this woman walk up. Watch, watch her affect. Listen to her grunt. Mm. Mm. Wow. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Yep. My name is Lydia Diamond. And I used to live in Burlington. Now I'm in South Burlington. I had a glorious time this year running for South Burlington City Council. Why did you run, Lydia? They asked. And I said, because no person of color has ever stepped up to do it. So here I am. Guess what? I'm running again. <laughs> but I want y'all to know I came out today in support of these beautiful black women behind me because y'all got us all fucked up. And you fuck with one, you fucking with all of us. And we don't play that shit. I'm from the gutters of Brooklyn, New York. And I came to Vermont in 94. My mama brought me here. She wanted me to live. See my shirt? I, I, I brought my ancestors with me. Because I have worked uh, for my route at the Burlington Free Press. But he was a big, beautiful, blonde woman named Jennifer Johnson. And she loved to ride Lydia. And I was discriminated against. So when, even though I, I don't know Taistia personally, I do know she a black woman. So I know exactly what I know exactly what she went through. Did you cut me off? Oh, I know exactly what she went through. And it's been going on for far too long. I came to let y'all know that the domestic violence against women of color has to stop. It has to stop. Enough is enough. We don't want to fight. We want to be respected as human beings. First, first human beings. Thank you, thank you. We deserve to breathe. We deserve to support our families. We deserve everything that you get. I'm entitled you. to it too. Thank you so much. You, are you trying to shut me down? I'm telling you that your time is up. Oh, okay. Thank you. I'll be back. Okay. You have not seen the last of me. I'm from the gutters of Brooklyn, New York. Yeah, it's obvious. You brought the gutters with you, not your ancestors. And that last statement, everything that you get I'm entitled to it too. Let me quote to you, Dr. Maya Angelou. When people tell you who they are, believe them. It's time for another break and we're gonna leave you with some local news coverage from three years ago that describes one of the events that set the stage for what you're seeing on our show today.
Racism officially declared a public health emergency in Burlington. Mayor Merle Weinberger, members of the Vermont Racial Justice Alliance and 30 plus participating organizations made the announcement this morning. They also released plans to address race-based health disparities and systemic racism in Chittenden County. We are pouring over the plan. We'll outline what we found out tonight. Looking for a non-woke place to put your money where your mouth is? Put it where my mouth is. Disaffected supporters get access to our private Discord chat server, backstage episode recording sessions, surprise guests, and more. And all it takes is $10 a month. You've got two options. Either Substack, visit us at disaffectedpod.substack.com or go over to subscribestar.com slash disaffected. Remember, choose the $10 level or higher for Discord access. Can't get enough of our love, baby? That's because you're not subscribed. Move that thumb over to the great big old subscribe button on your podcast app so you never miss an episode. We put out audio-only exclusive content that you won't get on any other video platform, so make sure you subscribe today. Welcome back. You're going dis- to you're going to see a display of some white ally ship coming up. Let's go right into it, please, Kevin. Senator, when that stupid song came out and I started seeing I'm an eighth generation Vermonter small town saying that somebody is going to get killed in this community. I know this woman from a movie that is internationally famous for you being racist and writing slurs on her home. I'm wearing this tape on my mouth because if you haven't seen the movie yet, she's putting tape on her mouth. This is what it looks like, okay? It's called Misogyny in the Digital Age. It's an international film about racism in Vermont and one of the victims is sitting right there. I suggest you all watch it. If I die or get killed by any of your crazy small town yokels, I'll know where it came from. But I still yield my time and let them finish. So another lady Madonna, so selfless. Someone is going to get killed in this community. Yeah, it's going to be a white person, sweetie. This narcissistic display. You know what she's doing? She's stepping and fetching is what she's doing. Yeah. Yeah, I said it. It's obvious. She's performing so she gets good girl points from her activist masters and mistresses. And this crazed hatred of white working class and poor people, you can hear it. If I get killed by any of your crazy small town yokels, I'll know where it came from, but I still yield my time and let them finish. How will you know you'll be dead? I'm going to make a guess here. It's speculation. I think she's from a poor white working class small town and a yokel family. I speculate and guess that that's where her hatred comes from, her own shame. Why do I think that? Because although I never got that extreme, I used to say things like that myself out of shame that I came from a poor family on food stamps and welfare headed by a single mother who was crazy. I hated everybody who stunk, as I thought of them, stunk of the trailer park, rusted cars. (sighs) So much of So much of this hatred, this blame shifting, is out of personal insecurity and shame. It doesn't excuse it. I'm not making an excuse here. Remember my catchphrase, excuses. Explanations are not excuses. Detailing the steps that lead to an outcome does not morally justify the outcome. Don't mistake me, please. 
But in a way, I've been that person. I've been her. When you grow up, I don't know what her, what her family life was really like, obviously. <clears throat> but I do know that when you grow up in a deranged family, you grow up poor. Many children respond to that. You, you're ashamed. Your clothes come from the Salvation Army. They don't come from, they don't even come from the J.C. Penney catalog, which is what I thought. It's what I thought rich people got their clothes from. It's embarrassing. It's humiliating. You feel less than, and you want to claw your way out of the pit. And I did claw my way out of the pit in fits and starts. In some pits, I stayed in for longer than others. But I'm a class climber. I did it consciously. I'm not sorry that I did it either. I'm sorry that I did it as unreflectively as I did. And I'm sorry that I allowed myself to say horrible things about people who were like me because I hated who I was. I was ashamed of who I was. I think that's where a lot of this comes from. All right. Um, next clip, please, Kevin. I will go to Councillor Hightower. Um, I will not be making the motion on board docs. Instead, I would move to not accept the memorandum financial review of expenditures by IRB in fiscal years 21 and 22, but instead refer both of the materials posted under this as supporting documents to, to the HR committee to consider a full public articulation of harm from Mayor Murrow Weinberger and the City of Burlington to Taisha Green, Casey LRB, and their families for the continued defamation of character and warrant unwarranted actions taken through city processes like the audit itself and an apology of the same. I also asked the HR or we also asked the HR committee to establish a process for independent evaluation and oversight of the hiring and retention policies and solutions employed by the City of Burlington to combat anti bopac and gender-based discriminatory practices. And I would like the floor back after a second. Uh, thank you. Seconded by Councillor Bergman. Um, before we go any further and before you have the floor back, that is a long motion and something that we're going to need to have so that we can all see that. Do you have, I, I take it you were reading that. Um, is that something that you can send to, um, to the clerk? Do you notice how the language of her motion matches almost verbatim what many of the speakers have been saying tonight because she's part of this plot. She's part of it. She's a city councilor and she's part of it. That, that's what I was talking about earlier. That is the attempt to get the city to admit guilt in writing, to admit that they defamed Taisha Green, and they didn't, to set it up for a court case. That's the only thing. <laughs> That's the only thing they didn't win on. I had, I had a disagreement with, um, with our, our friend, friend of the show, Christopher Aaron Felker, um, who helped a great deal putting the show together this week. Thank you. Um, I had a disagreement with him before we started taping. He said they didn't get what they wanted. They lost. This is great. He's right. They didn't get the motion that they wanted. But I don't think this was a victory for right and good. I don't think there's anything to celebrate about this meeting. Um, that's the only thing they didn't get. They got the rest of what they wanted. And what they wanted was to abuse white people in public and to be seen to be able to abuse them to demonstrate that white people don't have constitutional rights, and they do. They wanted to exercise power, and they won. They did. They abused the city council. City council just sat there and took it. Karen Paul had any brass or moxie of her own. What she should have done is stood up and banged her gavel loudly and said something like, you may express your opinions, you may object to anything this council or its staff does. This is a public forum and this is America. But what you will not do is abuse this council. You will not abuse other people in this room. You will not silence other people and you will not threaten them. But that would require character. 
This whole night was designed to intimidate city councilors. That's what it was. And some of them were in on it. <sighs> Sociopathic abuse runs this city. This is narcissistic abuse. This is authoritarianism. This is the undoing of an American city. It is the undoing of this country's founding principles. And my feelings are mixed about this. It's hard to sit there and watch Karen Paul and Moreau Weinberger being abused this way, even though they've targeted my friends and they've targeted me, and even though that they're narcissistic abusers themselves, it's still hard to watch. Nobody deserves to be treated this way. I couldn't watch my own mother being treated this way. Yeah, really. It's possible to see people as the opponents they are and still see them as fully human. It's possible not to go all the way to hell. But on the other hand, Moreau, Karen, the rest of them, this is what they deserve. And more to the point, it, it couldn't have happened any other way. These are the consequences of the actions that they themselves took. It's right and it's salutary for everyone to experience the consequences of actions that they have consciously chosen for themselves. But we, citizens, we don't deserve this. We as Americans don't deserve this. We are the ones who put them there and we're suffering for their sins. They can't actually represent us as politicians. Here we don't have local representation. This is not representation. This is almost a coup. I, and I, I don't think that a Karen Paul or a Moreau Weinberger is a reachable person. If they had the character to act with integrity, they would not be where they are today. They would not have achieved what they have achieved, at least not the way they went about doing it. So I'm not trying to convince the Karen Pauls or the Moreau Weinbergers of anything, and I don't think you should either, because it's a fool's errand. Recognize hardened, concretized character problems. This is a life skill, it's a survival skill. Recognize them. Do not waste your time thinking that you can love or reason or cajole somebody back to a state of psychological normality that they never possessed in the first place. I want you to be Todd LaCroix, the man who was run out of the auditorium. We have to be Todd if we are to have any chance of saving ourselves and our society. We have to be defiant. We have to say no and be unmoved. Todd, you shouldn't have let them run you out of the auditorium. I'm proud of what you said, but you shouldn't have done that. Do better next time. We have to scream louder than the liars. And we have to enact consequences, real, appropriate, proportionate, sane consequences for the Karen Pauls and the Moreau Weinbergers. At the ballot box, at council meetings, in whatever way we can in civil society. We, normal people, we're behind the ball here. We're losing, we're losing ground. The narcissist supremacists are winning. This is not what you've seen tonight. This is not a taste of the future. This is now. This is war. That's not a metaphor. This is war. Are you going to fight? <laughs>